Greetings. In this uh, student tutorial, I will demonstrate certain aspects of the engine management simulator to help you as a student be proficient in understanding how to access information and test uh, various components. So I'm going to open up uh, the no fault simulator here. So this vehicle has no actual problems or anything like that. But we're going to demonstrate how you would do certain things inside the simulator. Uh, first thing that's going to pop up is a work order um, that, that you can you can read through. Um, we're just going to close that out for now. This engine simulator it works best if you have a computer with a mouse or trackpad. You can move this vehicle by clicking by left clicking and dragging from right to left, up and down. You can go to the back of the car if you need to. To zoom in, you can either use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out on uh, various components and things like that, or you can use this slider bar up here at the top, either one. Depending on the device you're using, that will be more or less easier. There's also buttons here you can click as well. So it's multi-device compatible. Typically, you're going to want to be zoomed in. You know, when you're if you're testing components underneath the engine compartment, you're going to want to be zoomed in rather close like this. If you're too far zoomed out, you're going to have problems, you know, uh, being accurate with pinpoint, putting the pinpoint leads on certain things and components. So, so make sure you're zoomed in nice and tight when you want to connect the meter and things like that to various components on in, in around the engine bay. Over here to the left, you've got all your tools. Uh, first of all, here we'll start with the in instrument panel. <clears throat> so you've got a tachometer. Uh, temperature gauge in Celsius, you got your check engine lights, oil pressure, battery, etc. You have a throttle position, uh, throttle uh, right here, which you can control uh, using the slider. And then your ignition key, so you're going to left click and twist to the right to start the car. Um, when the engine's running, you will see that it's got a little bit of a shake to it there, that's normal. Um, you got an RPM here, your check engine light, etc. You can stroke the throttle and see the RPM increase. You can move this dash panel around on your screen, uh, you know, if it, to move it in and out of the way if you need to. Some of the other components and things that you're going to be, you'll need to learn how to use is the multimeter. This is a manual range meter, um, so uh, as far as the ground connection. The only place that you can place this black probe here is right on the battery. There's no, no means to connect it to a bolt or something like that. So if you're testing for power, you're going to always put it here on the negative post of the battery. Uh, your, your multimeter, of course, we got 200 millivolts, 2 volts, 20 volts, 200 volts, 600 volts. Uh, and, then you, and if we're testing the battery, for example, you're probably going to want to have this set to the... Uh, 20 volt position. So you, you can see we're testing battery voltage. You can also uh, connect the multimeter. You can back probe certain connections and things like that and get voltage readings and things uh, just by simply uh, back probing on uh, the, the, uh, the component. Here again you might have to zoom in rather tight tightly to be able to place the pinpoint probe. Uh, the tighter you zoom in, the more easier it's going to be to place the probe, etc. All right, uh, there, there also there is a, a, you can also check for resistance using the meter. So, for example, if I wanted to measure the resistance of the uh, this air temperature sensor, I can connect. The probes to the the, uh, to the component, and then I can move over here to the, the ohm re meter range area. For <coughs> specifications on on components, in order to uh, retrieve those, you're going to go over to, and open up the diagnostic system. This diagnostic system uh, not only can you read codes and get scan data. You, this is where you're going to go to find all your component specifications. Uh, you can here again move this scan tool around on the screen. This lower right hand triangle here, you can make this nice and big so you can see it very easily. 
Uh, to close to close something out, you can just simply go over here and you can click on it. It would close this diagnostic system. So you can kind of make more space on your screen by, by closing th certain items just by clicking on them. <clears throat> Uh, so to get to this vehicle specs, we're going to first identify the vehicle. Uh, of course, here's your fault codes. But in, in the, to get to the, um, the specifications, you're going to go into Systems, Engine Management, and then Information. So all information is right here. And you enter the specifications area through the wiring diagram. So you have a block diagram, and this is basically just going to show you the various control modules in the network. Or to back up, we're going to hit this little bu um, backup button. Here's where you're going to go into wiring diagram, and then to get to the specifications for a component, you can either click on the component you wish to get specifications for. So here, for example, is one of the ignition coils. If I would click here, it's going to take me right to the specification page. Here's my voltage supply, resistance values, component locations, and then known good lab scope patterns and the conditions that those were taken under. So that's very useful. Use the back button here. You can also use this legend down below. So here, for example, we're testing this, uh, the resistance of this uh, air temperature sensor. So if I click on intake air temperature sensor. There it shows me the location, uh, the supply voltage, and then down below here we got a resistance to temperature um, chart. So everything that you need to diagnose uh, the vehicle is going to be found inside the scan tool. So I'm going to review that again because this is a real important. Uh, we'll just go back here to the beginning. You're going to go into information wiring diagram and then either click on the component you wish to get specifications for or just go down here to the legend and click on the component and then you'll get the ID all the specifications up here locator um, charts and any good known good lab scope patterns that'll all be right here for you some other things here inside the scan tool uh, we can look at fault codes to, to register fault codes and things, you will have to have either the engine running their ignition or ignition to the run position. So we can uh, look for fault codes. We have memory codes and uh, active codes or actual codes. So memory and active. Um, this would be for the ECU or the engine control unit. And then there's also a throttle valve control module. <clears throat> for any codes, you can also get to the freeze frame data if that's necessary for uh, or useful to you. Just by clicking on a code, you can see information about the vehicle when that code was set. But uh, the biggest thing you want to pay attention here to is do you have memory codes, codes that are history, or do you have active codes, things that are happening uh, right at the moment. So because I have this sensor unplugged, we got some we got some active codes. Okay, so if we move down here, we're gonna look at also the wiring diagram that's uh, that's available here from the menu. <clears throat> this is the same wiring diagram that you'll find in the scan tool, but they do different things. So the look is the same. But here, when you click on a component, it goes to the specifications. This one is very useful for uh, helping you identify components. So let's say that you're looking for that air temperature sensor. Well, uh, you want to find it in the schematic here. If you hang your mouse over a component, it tells you what that item is. <clears throat> so this is the EGR valve. Here we got the accelerator pedal sensor, Hall effect sensor intake air temperature sensor. So here's the inner air intake and then here's the engine temperature sensor. So that is very useful. Uh, this diagram can be printed um, and you can also drag this this corner to make it nice and big on your screen. Here again uh, once you get the information you need to make more space on your screen just open up the menu and click on it to collapse it. Um, if we want to get rid of this scan tool you know, we can collapse that as well just by clicking on it and then removes it. <clears throat> um, if you 
do disconnect a component while the engine is running it will set a code for that component uh, just so you know that <clears throat> um, what are some other things here I can share with you just be familiar <clears throat> but the best advice I can give you is just practice you're going to be practicing on a site called simulator.electu.com uh, you'll sign up for a free student account and then the system's going to throw uh, random faults at you so all these <clears throat> everything that you see on the screen uh, and if it lights if it lights up with kind of a halo around it those things you can uh, remove if you wish to remove a component uh, and store it. You can drag it down here to the bottom and store it. For the student competition, you will not be able to replace parts, so don't worry about that. But you can, you know, remove components and drag them down here if you need to. <clears throat> Everything kind of comes out uh, to replace. So you can move parts around like that. Any of these components here, you can disconnect. I would be very familiar with uh, you know what what these components are, so uh, learn about you know what what each of these components do. Uh, you can which, which components you can uh, unfasten. So be familiar with that. <coughs> uh, the control module. Uh, you, if you wish, you can either do testing at the component, or if it's easier for you, you can use the breakout box if you want to connect that to the computer. And then you would use the uh, the uh, wiring diagram uh, to test the components here at the computer. So if that's easier or more efficient for you, you're welcome to do that uh, using these pin numbers. So the pin numbers here in the uh, you see in the ECU correspond to these pin numbers up here. Although it might be just as easy for you to if you have to do any testing at a component, just to um, you know uh, zoom in on the component and uh, you know if you need to unplug it you can do testing at the component itself or you can back probe uh, the, the pins either way <clears throat> so that's about it as far as the tutorial um, you know be familiar with how to use the uh, the multimeter for those that wish to use the oscilloscope I will just give a brief tutorial on that uh, here again, if you want it to ground the oscilloscope, the alligator clip needs to go on the, the, the negative post of the battery. A good way to get started here once you turn this on is just click auto uh, and then you got your, by default, <coughs> channel 1 will be, connect, will be turned on. Here's your channel 2. So let's say I want to get an injector pattern here. I can, I can back probe on the, uh, on the injector and I can start the the vehicle up. I click if you click auto that's a good starting point and then you can once once that's gonna basically get a nice pattern on the screen for you automatically and then if you want to zoom in on this pattern here you have your time and your voltage so if I want to zoom in on this I can click the plus and zoom in on that voltage or I can hit the minus and make it smaller either way and then you can change the voltage display here so right now we're on 20 volts per division so each one of these blocks is 20 volts this line here this is my zero line wherever this is you can move this zero line up and down the screen if you wish and uh, and then I can change my voltage level here using the, the uh, plus and minus uh, if you do want to use channel 2 you can you can go over here to channel 2 hit OK turn channel 2 on by using the arrow keys and now we have channel 2 is on you can adjust <clears throat> the zero line here so it equals with the uh, channel 1 if you wish to do that so I can get get two patterns on here if I wish to so um, that's how you're going to use the uh, oscilloscope if, if you should desire to use that that's just about it so I hope you enjoy um, the competition and that you are able to practice uh, using the uh, the simulator here again I'll just show you where to go for that simulator tutorial 
just go to simulator.electude.com and what you're going to do you can either a couple ways you can just simply try out the simulator and you can just it'll just pull up the no fault and you can kind of just play around with this car practice you know hooking up the the various components you could do all your practice right here if you wanted to uh, or if you want to actually experience uh, real live problems uh, go ahead and uh, uh, sign up by click by try electude simulator and uh, nah, I'm sorry you've got to actually sign up I'm sorry this button here click sign up and uh, then you'll uh, put in a name there email address password agree to terms of service and then just have fun with it and you can actually compete with other students from around the world to uh, fix the problem uh, uh, the quickest and easiest so uh, have fun with the uh, engine simulator and uh, we will see you at the student competition in just about a week.